ಪರ್ಣಿವೇಸರಮಣೀಯದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾನಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೇರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಘನಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಆಲ್ ಮೈಟಿ ಅವರ್ ಬಿಲೌಡ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಭಗತ್ ಜೈನ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುಡಿಯೋಟಿಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಭಕ್ತ ಚಿಂತಾಮಣಿಸ್ ಒನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಾವು ಟುಡೇ ಒನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸಂತ ದಾಸ್ ಜಿ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ವನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಸಂತ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಎಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಟೈಮ್ he has many many divine powers due to bhagwan swami narayan's grace amongst them sadguru sunir skudan swami written in this bhakta chintamni many powers like he has no any feelings of bodiness he remain aloof from his body even though he he was living in his body still he is remain different he has many other powers <coughs> which is written in this bhakta chintamni by sadguru sri nishkudanand swami sadguru sri nishkudanand swami says and writ- uh, he written in this bhakta chintamni that he has attained this much this much power only by obeying bhagwan swami's command and that's why sadguru sri nishkudan swami rat dhanya dhanya sadhu sant das jene nahi atana adhyas pind chata pami siddh gati phare lok par loke sumati swami says sandas ji swami he has attained such a divine power that due to his power he can go anywhere without any means meaning without any plane or without any chopper he can flew from one place to another not only this but even though he was living in his body still he remain aloof and without any help he can go from one place to another uh, like you can go from new jersey to florida by plane but without any plane or without any chopper or without any means sandas ji swami has attained a divine power by obeying bhagwan swaminarayan's command and due to this divine power he can flew without plane from one place to another the same thing written in vachanamrut bhagwan swami and wrote in the first vachanamrut and first vachanamrut bhagwan swami and says when a duty of god he contemplate for your the divine form of bhagwan swami and then due to constant com- contemplation he has attained such a power that he can see a uh, divine abodes of bhagwan as well as the divine forms of bhagwan resides in various divine abodes this is the same thing happen here in the case of sandas ji swami because sandas ji swami he has a uh, practice he has master a technique to constant contemplation on the form of bhagwan and due to his constant contemplation he has attained this divine power and so he can go anywhere 
wherever he likes now as he has this divine power due to the grace of bhagwan swami narayan bhagwan swami narayan himself once ordered him bhagwan swami narayan said to uh, to sandas ji swami that you should go to meet dalu ji dalu ji was mukta of bhagwan swami narayan he was as he was mukta so definitely he was he lived in a divine place where no any human being can reach and sandas ji swami was commanded to go there sandas ji swami did not knew about where the about the place where dalu ji lived and what is exact the way to reach there but still bhagwan swami narrated him that there uh, there is no any human being capable to reach there not only this but amongst the way whoever try to reach there he definitely attain uh, he definitely encounter so many obstacles like a uh, a uh, very dense forest and uh, many many rivers he had to cross in this way very dangerous way and not only this but in the jungle even man can be eaten by man this is what the situation now sandas ji swami knew about this situation but still he was ready to go there because in his mind in his mind he decided that i have to only one option and that is to obey bhagwan's command i have no other choice because in his life he had many times experienced that uh, bhagwan swami nar whatever he gives commands he himself fulfill it we have just to try to obey his command remaining task will be fulfilled by bhagwan himself that is not our duty our duty is to just try to obey his command in in this way sandas ji swami just try to obey bhagwan's command and he was ready to go to unknown place where dalu ji lived bhagwan swami narayan says sandas ji swami actually i want to go there i had promised to dalu ji and so i had to go there but as my schedule is tight i am very busy here and so i cannot go there so instead of me you should go there but now you have no more time you should go there as much as you can go now not only this but bhagwan swami narayan instructed sandas ji swami what is your main duty at there after meeting dalu ji you should narrate the all the story happen in our satsang the method and the way of incarnation of bhagwan swami narayan his way of preaching the lifestyle of his sadhu and the devotees about the five vartmans in this way you should narrate all about our satsang to dalu ji by saying bhagwan swami narayan says in this way you should pass my divine blessings to dalu ji and when you narrate all this about me and our satsang dalu ji will be pleased now in this way satan uh, sandas ji swami decided to go there but as the place is unknown and the way is also difficult but unknown also and so first he thought in his mind how can i reach there but immediately he remembered the divine form of bhagwan he sat in meditation po- position and shut his eyes and remember remember the divine form of bhagwan swami narayan and immediately his body flew like a plane 
even he cannot feel he cannot understand what had happened and after a few minutes he reached the uh, that unknown place where daluji lived there daluji was not alone but other 16 muktas as well as a uh, one female uh, he was also uh, she was also a mukt they lived there now when sundarji swami reached this divine place then definitely daluji got the sense that there is no possibility of human being that uh, any human can reach this place then how can this human can appear here then after this thought he understood that this is not a man this is a definitely a mukt of bhagwan swami narayan because without a divine person nobody can know even this place then he welcomes sandhas ji swami because this is a manner whoever a divine or whoever a greater than us when he approach our home or our place then we should uh welcome him this is the manner this is also also described in the sikh sapatri bhagwan swami and says us to welcome a sant welcome our guru welcome our parents in this way we should respect them and daluji even though he was mukt still for our preaching he welcome sandhas ji swami because he also understood understand that the uh, sandhas ji swami was not an ordinary human being but he was a representative of bhagwan swami narayan because as bhagwan swami narayan promised him to once meet him in his place but instead of bhagwan swami narayan sandhas ji swami as a representative of bhagwan swami narayan he appeared him uh, appeared there and met him now after welcoming Daluji offered Sandhas Ji Swami a proper seat to sit on. Then after he and other muktas they offer and worship a pujan of Sandhas Ji Swami with a sandalwood paste and kumkum. Then after they offer a garland. Then after complete the when they completed all this welcoming ceremony. they first offer a delicious food to eat this food definitely divine and so sandhas ji swami become satisfied after eating this food now sandhas ji swami they never meet before this daluji and other muktas and now they ask about each other then after sandhas ji swami pass bhagwan swami narayan's divine blessings and message and he narrated everything about our satsang to daluji now after listening all about our satsang daluji also asked many many question to sandhas ji swami because he also desired to know more and more about our satsang this teach us whenever we approach any sant we should also ask them about satsang not about this worldly things what what is happening in this world that is not a task that is not a matter we have to uh, that is not our duty to ask such worldly things to sant but whenever we approach any sant we should also uh, we should at the time asking about satsang about god about the matter to meditation this is only the way to remain in the satsang happily and this is the method of progress in the satsang now in this way daluji asked many question to uh, sandhas ji swami and he also asked about bhagwan swami narayan then sandhas ji swami narrated more thing about bhagwan swami narayan sandhas ji swami narrated the system of a uh, samadhi which bhagwan swami narayan grants everybody who come in, in come in in his contact 
भगवान स्वामीनारायण डिन नेवर सीन अ कास्ट और कैपेबिलिटी और सीन और मेरिट्स ऑफ एनी पर्सन बट हुई ओवर कम इन इज कॉन्टैक्ट भगवान स्वामीनारायण ग्रांड सिम आ समाधि मीनिंग इन ट्रांस इन ट्रांस a soul if he is not a sinner then he definitely go into the bara bhagwan and those who are sinners they definitely go into the jampuri the hell and there they experience a very very difficult misery and those who are not a sinner and due to of god they definitely enjoy the divine bliss in the samadhi now not only these but sandhaji swami also narrated daluji Dal- the system of the santo and devotees in our satsang how santo and devotees living in our satsang that is uh, the also one of the matter of narration now then after then after sandhaji swami also narrated to daluji the other miraculous power of bhagwan swami narayan he has used in our satsang how he came when, uh, at the time of day to devotees uh, to devotees and even uh, at the time of the end uh, of even animals then after in this way one by one day sandhaj ji swami every day narrated our satsang story and divine charitras of bhagwan swami narayan to, to daluji and other muktos and in this way sandhaj ji swami passed 6 months in this divine place now after that daluji requested swami swami whatever the eternal and divine peace and happiness you and we are enjoying here in this divine place that is only limited this is the this is only happened because of bhagwan swami narayan's grace but the limitless divine and eternal happiness and bliss is only at the place where bhagwan swami narayan himself stay and so you should go there then uh, sandhaj ji swami decided to go back to sri ji maharaj and immediately when he decided to when he wishes to go back to sri ji maharaj then immediately again he sat into meditation he remembered the divine form of bhagwan swami narayan and immediately he flew back to gadda now when after coming back into gadda when he met sri ji maharaj then he narrated what was happened what had happened in that divine place and what he had narrated to uh, daluji and other muktos how they asked him a question about sri ji maharaj and our satsang this everything he described in the assembly and by listening this bhagwan swami narayan as well as the other santo and devotees they become very happy and finally all the others uh the devotees who are newcomers in the satsang they understood the divine powers and divine blessings of bhagwan swami narayan and they understood the power of meditation because if we remember the divine form of bhagwan then due to this uh, remembrance of bhagwan's divine form we have also this much power in our own self and by the power we can also please the please bhagwan swami narayan as well as his santo mukto and bhakto this is only a sense of this divine charitra of sandhaj ji swami there are there is four points in this charitra first one is we can uh, understood from this story that first point is to remember bhagwan in our all activities so that bhagwan can give us a uh, he he can grace us with a divine power the another thing is that narrating the glory and the story of our satsang everywhere this is the second point we can learn from this story 
that wherever and wherever we go we should narrate about bhagwan swami narayan about our guru ji about our santo about our about the system of our satsang now third point is whenever our puja guru ji or santo come to our home we should welcome him we should worship him we should offer him garlands this is the matter method of welcoming santo in our satsang in this way Sandhaji Swami passed Bhagwan Swami Narayan's divine message and blessings to Daluji and other muktas. They became very pleased by listening about Bhagwan Swami Narayan and our satsang. Then after, when Sandhaji Swami come back, this and narrated all this story in the assembly. This is not a limited power. or miracle in the life of sandaji swami but many other miracle and divine powers he has experienced due to the grace of bhagwan swami narayan but we will continue it in next sunday shri ganeshyam maharaj ni jay प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोद कारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह बोलो घनश्याम महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ओम आई री Our beloved Bhagwan Swami Narayan, Puji Pad Guruji, Puji Santo, Hari Bhakto Jai Swami Narayan. You know, each and every person, everyone in this world, has boundaries. Boundaries. that are very very limited to us let me give you an example if we look at the sun too much what happens to our eyes they're going to burn right what about if we eat too much food stomach ache what about if we hear too many loud sounds gets really annoying just like right now what if uh What if uh, suppose a fire is happening and you know we have a fire for warming our body up suppose we ha- stick our hand too close in what happens starts burning right what if we eat too many beans ha huh. go ahead and say it something bad happens you can say it in your mind just like how these are day to day things and we have boundaries in our life in the same way 
there's boundaries that are good for us, satsang related. But before that, I don't know if you've heard of the United States Department of Homeland and Security. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Pretty much what it is, is it's charged with the primary responsibility of protecting the United States and its territories from and responding to terrorist attacks, man-made accidents, and natural disasters. Pretty much, it protects us from all the bad from the outside. The Homeland and Security works in the civilian sphere to protect the United States within, and the outside borders are protected by the Department of Defense. But if the U.S. didn't have these borders, what would happen? If the U.S. didn't have any borders, then someone can come in, do drug trafficking, or terrorists can come in and attack buildings, etc. and etc. We don't want to think about this point, but the main focus that we have to focus on is border. Today's topic is on border. What do you mean? What do I mean by border? Well, just like how the United States Department of Homeland Security protects the U.S. from terrorist attacks, same way, niyams, meaning vows, protect a devotee from maya, illusion, worldly desires, such as lust, anger, greed, jealousy. If a person, if a satsangi had niyams as a border, then none of these, you can say, intruders will be able to attack. Why? Because we have a strong fortress. Just like how a king has a kingdom and however strong his fortress is, that's how much he can uphold. If he goes to war and if the army is very small compared to the opposite army. But if his fortress is very strong, then nothing can happen to him. In the same way, if our niyams are very strong, and then nothing can happen to us in the words of getting absorbed by Maya or any kind of illusion, we can say. You know, what do I mean by niyams? Niyams in the factor of, you know, Bhagwan has laid them down. As satsangis, one should not eat meat. As satsangis, one should not eat onion or garlic. As satsangis, one should not drink alcohol. As satsangis, one should not say bad words. These are niyams. They're very small, but they have a very strong boundary. And when it's followed, you can see the appropriate results in effect. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm reminded of a story of Puja Guruji. You know, he went to London in 1994, and it was his first uh, religious tour outside of India. And he went to London, and there, uh, United, in the United Kingdom, there he had a parain, meaning katha, for seven days. So Guruji was, you know, going to perform katha. And one of the days, as he was performing katha, he was talking. All of a sudden, he became unconscious right there, and he fell off where he was sitting. Obviously, all the saints and devotees were very concerned. So what they did was they took Guruji to Puja, uh, the, the hospital, and there they, you know, obviously the emergency room. And the doctors said that Guruji had a minor stroke. Due to that, he was unconscious. But Guruji's uh, physical, you can say, uh, health was critical. So he needed to be taken to the ICU, meaning the intensive care unit, there which uh, special attention is given to people who have more health problems. So for some time, Guruji stayed there, and then after his health stabilized, he was brought into a simpler room, meaning the regular rooms where a person comes in if they have some kind of minor treatment that needs to be done. Guruji stayed there for a little bit, and uh, obviously, you know, the codes of santos are that they cannot, you know, look or have any contact, any contact with women. That's one of the main vows of a saint, of the Swamnian sect. So uh, Puja Guruji obviously had this rule and he had told the Hari Bhaktos there that please, uh, you know, tell, you know, the nurses that he would prefer a female nurse or a male nurse over a female nurse because of his vow, his religious niyam. So, after some time, 
by accident, a female nurse entered his room. After entering the room, right away, Guruji, what he did was there was IV stuck in his arm, obviously for glucose and other, uh, other medical treatments. Guruji just completely ignored what was pretty much in his body and he ran out of the room because he saw, you know, there was a woman entering his room. And he went where the santos were and he told him the whole, the whole situation. The saints were shocked at Guruji's, you know, religious, firm religious vow. And there, at that time, the devotees, obviously, they were also shocked because they have never seen such a saint where he was actually being medically treated, meaning it was his body. He didn't do anything on purpose. And that nurse, even if she was a female, was there to help him. She came in by accident, but Guruji didn't even think about his life at that time. What he thought was, what would Maharaj think? What, what, what is his niyams for us? After thinking that, Guruji immediately took that action. So the satsangis, the saints saw this and saw that, you know, greatness is due to faith in God as well as following his commands. And that was proven by Puja Guruji at that time. So, regarding that, you saw Guruji and Guruji was there at that time and took this action. But this is how a devotee's niyam should be. Strong and very firm and no one in the world can even, no one in the world can even move that person because that person is a firm as a mountain. Such a person can please Bhagwan and Guruji anytime. But we talked about niyams and they are somewhat difficult to follow. But what happens when a niyam is broken? Let's take a look. Have you heard of the Ramayan? Well, there is a story there in the Ramayan. Let me first give you a background setting. Ravan is a, a demon. Ram is Bhagwan, a god, and Lakshman is his sidekick, you can say. And Sita is Ram's wife, Bhagwan's wife. And let me tell you the story now. So Ravan, obviously he's the demon and he's the king of Lanka. And uh, he had heard that Ram's wife, Sita, was very beautiful. So obviously his mind was demonic. So what he wanted to do was kidnap her. So he plotted out to kidnap uh, Sita, but he knew that Ram was Bhagwan and very, very smart indeed. So what he did was he consulted his uncle who had the power, he was also a demon, demon, who had the power to transform into any kind of form that he wanted. And also with that form, whatever that person's voice was, also his voice would transform. So both his body and his voice would transform and he would able he would be able to take that form. So Ravan consulted him and said, you know, I want to do this. I want to kidnap uh, Ram's uh, wife. So help me out. And he was like completely said no because uh, he advised he advised uh, you know Ravan that he is very very bad. And uh, Ram Bhagwan is very uh, powerful, so if you do this, then it would be very difficult, and you might be, you might get in some kind of trouble. But Ravan, by force, said, "You know, if you don't do it, I'll kill you." He threatened his own uncle, his own uncle. But obviously, by that threat, he was forced to do it. So what he did was that demon took the form of a deer, and the horns of the deer were golden that's how he took the form so no one has ever seen a golden deer uh, a deer with golden horns right so he took that form and he went where uh, you know ram lakshman and sita were in that hut the, in the forest area and sita spotted that uh, deer with the golden horns so she told immediately ram that i want that uh, deer i'm fascinated by it Ram 
obviously complying to his wife's wish, went into the forest chasing after the deer. And the deer went deeper and deeper in. And pretty much as he went deeper and deeper in, he couldn't catch up to it. So what he did was he took out his bow and arrow and he shot the deer and pierced him. Obviously, it was the uncle, the demon uncle, that Ravan's demon uncle that he pierced. Immediately, he switched back into his original form. And at last, he told, before that, he told Lakshman to protect Sita, obviously, because he was straying from um, the whole situation. So Lakshman was protecting Sita at that time. But when the demon was about to die, he shouted out, Lakshman, please help me out. Run, come fast. So Lakshman heard this shout from the forest. So obviously now he's left in a dilemma because Ram had told Lakshman to protect Sita and now Sita is worried about Ram. What has happened to him? Obviously it wasn't Ram who was injured. Ram was the one who pierced the demon. But obviously remember, the voice, he could change and transform into any voice. So he transformed into uh, Ram's voice and said, Lakshman, please hurry. Come, I'm hurt. Come fast. So Sita became so worried and told Lakshman that go, go fast. Lakshman was left in a dilemma because he couldn't leave because his bro brother's command was to protect Sita. On the other hand, his brother was in trouble. What to do, what not to do. So he took the middle road. What he did was they were living in this small hut he drew a border. That border's name was called Lakshman Rekha. Lakshman meaning the person who drew the border and Rekha means border, boundary. And told Sita, do not step out of this border or else something bad will happen to you. Warned her. Sita, Sita said, no problem, just go and get Ram back. So Lakshman went into the forest and Ravan on the side was hearing this that he had told uh, pretty much uh, uh, Lakshman had told Sita that do not cross this border and everything something bad will happen so he knew that that border was bad news so Ravan disguised himself as a, a, a poor saint meaning a saint that needed food and went with a begging bowl to where the hut where Sita was and there started begging for food <clears throat> right there Sita saw and he's like this is a harmless harmless person so nothing can happen so Sita prepared some water and food and said come take it saint obviously Raman, Ravan was smart and he had heard that the border was danger so he didn't cross the border but what he had done was he told Sita please come here I cannot walk too much so Sita obviously knowing that this is a harmless saint went and crossed the border and there Ravan transformed again you know, into his own original self and kidnapped Sita threw her into the chariot and flew away to Lanka and that's how the Ramayana started but the main moral of this story is that Sita crossed the boundary broke the boundary went across the boundary when Lakshman had strictly told her not to due to that she got in trouble and got kidnapped in the same exact way, if we do not follow Bhagwan's rules in the form of niyams, even small rules like not eating onion, garlic, anything, etc., then we'll get in trouble. How so? We might not see it, but something will happen to us, not in this life maybe, in the life after. We won't get Bhagwan's Akshardham, we won't receive Bhagwan. These things will happen. So, that's why niyams are something that each and every person should follow even if one has to put one's life at stake regarding that as satsangis the best way to please bhagwan is to follow his niyams gansham maharaj nije shri patim shri daram sarva deveshwaram bhakti dharmatmajam vasudevam are madhavam kesavam gamdam karam swami narayanam nilakantham bhaje gansham maharaj nije